Okay, so uh, this is a, a, a figure, a, a more, a, a more uh, intuitive illustration of how the inverse mapping works. So essentially, the red line is the cumulative uh, distribution function, right? Uh, it goes from zero when x is small all the way to one when x is large. Okay, and if you are able to draw equally spaced intervals on the y-axis and sample the y-axis uniformly so that the number of samples lying in each interval is more or less equal, it's uniform. Then when you map it back to the x-axis, you're gonna see that whenever the CDF is flatter, right? Flatter means having a smaller derivative, which means the PDF is smaller, right? I mean, the slope of the CDF is the PDF. So wherever the slope of the CDF is small at the lower PDF, the same number of samples that you get from the same interval in Y is mapping to a bigger interval in the X axis. So naturally, the average number of samples that lies in a fixed interval is going to be less if the interval in x is wider right that corresponds to a lower pdf on the other hand when the cdf is deeper the same interval which is same number of samples on the y-axis is mapped to you into a narrower region in the x-axis that means the concentration of the samples in the x-axis is more corresponding to a larger pdf at that point all right, and uh, uh, the now let's actually take a look again at the PDF-based sampling method, the acceptance rejection method. And now with the uh, inverse CDF method, we can now generalize the acceptance rejection method a little bit more. Instead of starting, instead of having to start from a uniform distribution, right? Sample uniform distribution, then accept or reject. We can actually start with a distribution that is sampled using the inverse PDF function. So for example, if you look at the, this graph here, it illustrates how do we sample according to the blue distribution. So, so let's say the blue uh, is a scaled version of the desired distribution. As we can see, it's an infinite distribution, right? It goes, uh, it has a tail that diminishes as X increases, but it seems that it uh, might never decay to zero as X goes to infinity, right? It goes to zero, but it, it'll never become zero as X it becomes uh, a finite large number. So we cannot naively use the uh, PDF-based sampling method starting from a uniform distribution because we will never have a uniform distribution uh, whose interval goes to infinity. Uh, however, if the blue distribution also does not have an easy to compute CDF function, right? So for example, if we know the PDF only, we don't know the CDF and uh, the integral of the PDF to get the CDF is very difficult. Or even if we can compute the CDF, uh, the inverse of the function is very difficult to compute, then we also uh, cannot use the inverse CDF method. We can, then we can combine the PDF method and the inverse mapping CDF method. We can sample, for example, an exponential distribution that's illustrated in the red histogram. And then we can accept or reject according to the ratio of the red histogram to the blue histogram, right? We can basically sample another set of Ys that are a uniform zero to the height of the red the, uh, PDF. And we accept the sample if that random number is below the height of the blue PDF. We reject the sample if the random variable is higher than the height of the blue PDF. That way, we can combine these two methods and uh, pretty much sample any distribution we want, right? So these are the two methods that we use to sample uh, input of the 